Okay, guys, so in this video, I want to talk about Big Commerce Holdings, sticker symbol B I G C. So, this is one of my favorite stocks that I've been recently tracking, and it's an, a recent IPO uh, that was done. They just initially um, offered around 10 million shares or so at the initial price of $24, and the stock absolutely took off after that. So, it ramped up, uh, I believe it ramped up a ton over like 200 or almost 300% actually uh, more than that in the first couple of trading days. And then they, uh, what happened was they initially had offered 9 million shares and then they kind of increased that offering. So they diluted the stock a bit and then the, the stock uh, tank. So it basically, uh, after the IPO, it hit the initial resistance of like $100. And then it came back down here after they added to the initial offering and selling around, around $78. But I want to tell you guys why I think Big Commerce is an excellent, excellent long-term play on the e-commerce uh, software as a service business. It's the same business that Shopify is in, and Shopify is probably a competitor. And in terms of this uh, e-commerce software as a service business, um, I would say Shopify is number one, and number two is Big Commerce. So before I get into this video, guys, please smash the thumbs up button and hit the red subscribe button for more content on e-commerce stocks and stocks in general, guys. So let's get right into it. Okay, so what is Big Commerce? Well, to sum things up, like I mentioned earlier, is basically a way to empower small businesses and big companies to sell things online. So here we are at their website. And as you can see, it has a similar feel if you guys are familiar with Shopify and things like that. Some of their bigger customers are a Ben and Jerry's, Skull Candy, Woolridge, Bliss, and Burrow. So obviously, okay, so obviously what is big e-commerce? So big e-commerce is basically a platform to empower businesses and individuals to sell things online. So it's very similar to the same business model as Shopify. So as you can see here, probably their most famous customer out of these is Ben and Jerry's, uh, the ice cream uh, company, and basically uh, allows you to sell things online. So this is actually the enterprise phase of big commerce. So this is for bigger businesses and things like that. And then also they have a, a different solution for a smaller sellers as well. So they call this one uh, big commerce essentials. So as you can see here, Big Commerce Essentials, this is kind of the one for, you know, uh, the average Joe or the smaller seller to sell things online. And they also offer a free trial just like Shopify does. So basically their main selling point is they allow you to launch a free trial, allow you to build a store, and then you can sell things online very easily. And they also have some extra tools that you can use to kind of, if you want to sell on eBay, if you want to um you know uh kind of you know use an omni channel uh selling strategy and, and sell your stuff in, in in many different places on social media on facebook amazon instagram and google shopping and things like that so it's basically just a, another offering of shopify and i think the reason why that this company is in such a good position is number one it's a lot smaller in terms of market cap than uh would be a shopify so shopify is a really really massive company guys so i want to just quickly talk about the shopify market cap and could kind of compare it to where we are with big commerce okay so really quickly as you can see here shopify stock has absolutely been on a tear and i talked about it earlier i talked about shopify stock for you guys that are subscribed to my channel when it was around 350 dollars and how i thought it was definitely going to go to a thousand because i just felt like um selling things online is definitely going to be the thing to do in this decade as we all know with the whole pandemic situation and people just cautious about being in crowds it's just so much easier to transact online and shopify and big commerce are two solutions that allow people to do that so if you don't have the technical knowledge to know how to set up your own website and things like that, you can just use their software and uh, basically use their servers and they basically do everything for you. All you have to do is log in to the software, upload your products, and then you can guard, you can sell on your website or you can sell on Facebook and other places. But uh, you know, to get right into it, uh, we're looking at a $126 billion market cap here. And according to the, the current IPO, a big commerce market cap is much smaller so i want to just go to that prospectus right now okay so i'm on the prospectus page of big commerce you can find all this information at uh, their website bigcommerce.com and go to the ir uh, investor relations tab so as you can see here we're taking a look at now this offering has been uh increased a little bit so it's around i would say 10 million shares of total but it basically um 
will give us an idea of the current market cap. So if there's around, uh, there's about 10 million shares available. And since the uh, average share is selling for around, I believe the last close was around $79. Uh, just to do some quick math, that would mean we're basically looking at a company with around an $800 million uh, market cap. You guys let me know if my math is wrong, but I think that's what we're dealing with, about an $800 million uh, market cap here uh, for Big commerce. So as you can see here, Shopify I mentioned earlier is 125 billion, and this company, which is the number two competitor, is only 800 million. So this is a small cap company, and Shopify now is obviously a well-known large cap. So obviously, I don't think that big commerce is on the same level as Shopify. I think Shopify is definitely king, but I'm going to go into more of this perspective, guys, and show you why it can definitely work to own uh, the, the second biggest player. And I think this stock is going to trade and take the same trajectory that Shopify did. So as you can see here, initially priced at around $24. And I want to go into a few of the details about why I think um, Big Commerce is a special company. So first, I want to really talk about a little bit of background on the company to give you guys an idea of um, what, how much, how much money they're making and how many customers they have and things like that. So if you guys, uh, Shopify uh, has over a million customers uh, currently subscribed to their um, uh, software as a service uh, business. And currently, Big Commerce has around 60,000 stores uh, around across 120 companies. So that number was as of June 1st, 2020. So obviously, I'm pretty sure that number is increased due to the whole pandemic situation. But they're, they're definitely a lot smaller than uh, Shopify. So Shopify, if you were to say they have a million and Big Commerce only has 60,000, that means that uh, they are a fraction of the size of Shopify. But that's okay because I think that now that they're a public company, I think Big Commerce has a long way to go and they can move forward. So as you can see here is some numbers about the growing uh, retail e-commerce trends. So they predict that it will grow it, a double to around 21% of total retail spending in 2023. So that means that, uh, you know, right now they're estimating that uh, this number was around 10% in 2017. And from what I've looked at, it's basically growing at around 1% or so a year, but obviously the pandemic has accelerated that shift. So the fact that 21% uh, of global retail spending will be uh, online i think that it's very very smart to buy e-commerce stocks companies like big commerce shopify amazon um, overstock.com ebay basically any big company is going to be selling things online because we know with the introduction of 5g more and more people are going to be buying stuff online so here's kind of a chart that kind of uh illustrates this trend and basically every year it's going to increase more and more and more and more so this is another reason why i think big commerce is a great ipo and then i want to talk a little bit more about kind of uh, how much money they're making and things like that. So if we just come down here, we can get some information about their revenue, which is really important to look at. So as you can see here, it says our business has experienced strong growth. Their annual uh, revenue run run rate, run rate, so their ARR, their average annual recurring revenue, things like that, is around $137 million as of March 31st, 2020. So obviously they're making good money uh, and best thing about their revenue is that the, the revenue is recurring revenue. So that means it's not like they're selling one thing and then they're having to kind of look how to make more money. The money is continuing to come in. And I'm pretty sure that this number is kind of underestimated because, uh, you know, core Q2 was huge for e-commerce uh, companies. They saw record traffic due to the pandemic and a lot of people started websites and things like that. So I expect that this number will be a lot higher when they file their first um, quarterly report. So a uh, little bit about their uh, performance. Like I said, they, they have a great uptime, which is really, really important for people that sell things online. And then it talks a little bit about how uh, basically how much money they've been making during the, the pandemic closures. So as you can see here, it says beginning March 2020, the sales of essential plans increased 33%, 106%, 86% uh, March, April, and May 2020 year over year. So they're seeing a huge, huge growth in people signing up to basically sell things online. And then as you can see here, uh, the year-over-year year, uh, 
a revenue growth rate was around 29%, and year-over-year -year ARR was around 26%. So these are all basically strong trends. And as it talks a little bit more about the whole trend of online shopping, online shopping behaviors are evolving as e-commerce adoption is accelerating around the world. This puts tremendous pressure on businesses to pursue digital transformation with technology that innovates as fast as the market. And there's a lot of other cool numbers here, guys. I won't go into this stuff too much detail because this isn't really related to big commerce itself, but it just talks more about how uh, we're seeing a shift in uh, trends. And as you can see here, uh, it says that they forecast that retail e-commerce will reach 6.3 trillion by 2024. So that's a huge, huge shift. And we're going to see a lot more companies sell things online. And then one more interesting fact is that more than half of the world's population is now online and the average person spends around seven hours online per day across e-commerce content social networks applications on desktop and mobile platforms so if you're not online and you're not selling things online or you're not creating content you're going to uh miss out on a lot of customers because now half of the world population is online and I expect that number to continue to increase into the future. So now let's talk a little bit more about where I think the stock is going to head in the future and I want to also give you guys a heads up on the potential warrants that are going to come out around six months after the IPO. Okay, so I definitely think the stock price is going to increase a lot uh, heading up uh, and for the rest of the year simply because still a lot of people are at home and a lot of businesses and a lot of companies have shifted online permanently but I definitely think this stock price is going to crank a lot higher remember it IPO'd at around $24 and it's already at 79 but I want to give you guys one quick warning about uh, potential dilution that is going to happen probably six months from now so uh, to do some quick math six months from now would be around sometime in February. So for you guys that uh, aren't familiar with how things work, a lot of times with these IPOs, there's like a lock, there's like a lockout period for around six months where a lot of insiders and people that invested, early investors and seed investors that were in like the company really, really early stages, they're not allowed to sell their shares at the IPO day because it'll just flood the market with shares and that will make the price tank. So they usually make these companies wait like six months and then they end up uh, dumping those shares. So that's exactly what happened uh, with, uh, I believe one of the best examples for this was uh, Beyond Meat. Okay, so once this, all, once this all is said and done, there's going to be about 60 million shares available for purchase. And as you can see here, it kind of explains it in depth here. So it says there's around 9 million, but that's really 10 million because they added another million to it. So that is the 10 million of the IPO. And as you can see here, it says substantially all remaining shares of our common stock will be eligible for sale upon expiration of lockup agreements and uh, market standoff revisions beginning 181 days after the date of this prospectus. Um, yeah, so that's that six month period I was talking about. So there is going to be some the new shares sold of this stock. So just be prepared for that. So what I'm doing is, is I'm kind of just buying the stock now. And then I'm just keeping out for that lockup period where those shares will hit the market and it'll probably cause the stock to drop. But I'm going to make sure that I'm going to sell it before that lockup period happens. So just remember that uh, my my guess for that is around February. So that's really important because you don't want to just buy the stock too high and then it tanks with all these new shares hitting the market. But I still think that this is a good long-term hold as the ways I mentioned before. I just wanted to talk about that little caveat so uh, you guys don't get caught up in what happened with Beyond Meat where it just skyrocketed and all of a sudden the price dropped a lot. So that's it to wrap things up, guys. I'm going to talk a little bit about where I think stocks headed in the future. Okay, so where will uh, big commerce be in the future? Well, as you can see, I'm just looking at uh, a sample store. This is a demo store that you can make from big game commerce. And like you see, the National uh, Baseball Hall of Fame is using big commerce to power their store. And then you say, guys, it's just really easy to sell things online using big commerce. So it's just doing the same thing that Shopify is doing. It's just making it easy for people, uh, businesses, both small and large, to get involved in e-commerce. So any of these stocks, I think, are going to do well in the long run. We're going to see that trend um, for e-commerce continue to go well into the decade. So any, uh, most of these stocks are going to add more customers and do pretty well. So that's just an example of one of the stores here. Okay, so the stock price now is $79, uh, currently with only around 10 million shares available um you know with the uh, market uh, definitely a small cap company 
Uh, I showed you the difference between Shopify, 125 billion. This currently at around just under a billion. Uh, I think this has this company has a long way to go. So I'm not really sure if the stock's going to hit a thousand dollars, just like Shopify. But I'm pretty sure it's going to continue on that same trajectory. It doesn't have nearly as many customers currently as Shopify does, but it's definitely growing. And 60,000 stores is nothing to sneeze at. Of course, they're going to probably try to work their way up to 100,000 and 500,000 and so on and so on. So for me, I think a short term price target for this stock would be around 150 to 200 dollars. I don't see why it couldn't do this. We've seen so many other e-commerce stocks crank up. I expect big commerce to follow the overall trend of the rest of those companies. But so what I would do is I'm basically just buying on dips. For me, this is a good buying opportunity uh, plan to add to my stake. And then I want to buy as many shares as possible. And then I want to be careful of that lock up period because I know that the price is probably going to go down quite a bit once they dump those other shares. But even after that, still only 60 million shares outstanding is not a ton of shares. The only thing we have to worry about is kind of random offerings and things like that, which some companies like DraftKings has done recently, and that can kind of hurt the stock price temporarily. But long, time, long term, this is a great buy and hold. This is definitely a stock you want to hold. Uh, Shopify, Big Commerce, these are two stocks you definitely want to hold over the next five to 10 years. You're going to see an explosion of people online uh, selling things. Is The trend is only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger as more and more more people get comfortable buying things online and start pulling out their credit cards using PayPal and all of these other ways to purchase things. So that's it for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. So please smash the red subscribe button if you enjoy my content. Let me know what you think about big commerce stock in the comment section. Let me know if, or if you prefer Shopify. I'm really interested to what, hear what you have to say on this topic. So that's it for now, guys. Until next time, take care.